If you love Chevys, then this is the place for you. This is the Menard Chevy Series, where we tour the country to find the finest race cars and rides that are part of the bowtie breed. Eastern Pennsylvania at the legendary Maple Grove Raceway, a track that's been in operation for over 50 years. And we're here to see some of the coolest, fastest, and best built Chevrolets in the country. Drag racing, car show, swap meet, it's all happening, and we've got a lot to do. So let's get started. Gotta love the shoe boxes. We're here with Darren Clegg from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You have got a gorgeous one. Thank you very much. It's a 1956 Bel Air and drive it all the time. Love the air conditioning in it. Uh, just cruises back and forth wherever I go and never gives me a problem. Creature comforts, style, it looks awesome. But there's a story behind this car. I sold the car to a buddy that I actually became good friends with. And my father passed away in uh, 2013. And uh, when he passed away, my buddy offered the car back to me and I traded cars with him. So I got my father's car back after he passed away. Um, I wish I knew who built the car so I could find him, but uh, I tried calling Meekum where I bought it off of. And uh, I just couldn't find the connection of who used to own it. But uh, his, his details down to the even like painting uh, pieces on the motor the same color as the car and just little intricacies that he went above and beyond when he built the car. You never know, he might find you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now let's check out the Original Parts Group Award winner. Seeing the USA in your Chevrolet, but a 1970 Chevelle SS, how cool would that be? Well, this is the Original Parts Group Original Award winner, Bob Nace. Bob, you've seen the USA in this Chevrolet. What's it like driving this machine? It's, uh, it's fantastic. I, when I'm taking it out and driving around, I get a reaction from everybody that they brings back memories of their original cars and stuff like that there that they, they then you do get to hear their stories along with telling the story of how this was re, redone by my brother and my son. I owned this car now for 16 years. And basically about the last six years was really getting down to re, rebuilding it, did a complete frame off restoration and Got it running about two years ago, back on the road. So 16 years ago you bought it, it's been on the road for two years. What kind of condition did you find it in? It was, I want to say, fair condition. Got it with no front end, no drivetrain in it, and commenced to just finding the parts. And finding parts for a 1970 Chevelle SS has got to be tough. It was, trying to find original parts. I bought a lot of stuff from a OPG, Original Parts Group. They're, they're fantastic, their parts fit good, so it was, it was, in that respect, it was decent, it, was not, it wasn't bad. So yeah, we did a complete frame off, uh, we powder coated everything underneath the suspension, the frame, uh, it's got stainless steel exhaust on it, uh, the, all the nuts and bolts have been completely replaced or re, redone by myself or my brother or my son. It's uh, a lot of pride, basically, because we know we did it, we didn't buy it, we built this car ourselves, and it's just a good sense of pride. Joining us now is Lex Dudas, the Vice President and General Manager of Maple Grove. Lex, what a tremendous event. This event continues to impress me and I've been in this business a long time. It's grown and grown and grown and, and we're just thrilled to host this thing. It's close to 30 years that we've done this, but the, the, the activity we get with the race tide, we get with the, the car show and the flea market, the car corral. And the fan attendance, as people come here with their families and it's a vacation. Normally bracket racing comes with the driver and that's it. They bring families, there are four, five, six people per car and they, they have a picnic all weekend. We felt it was time to bring back some nitro. And a good way to do that is with Nostalgia Funny Cars and we've got a pretty good group here this weekend. We have a new slogan around here, it's called uh, Fun Place to Race. And I think it's, it's really working. Uh, we put a new track surface in this year. 
We're now a quarter mile of concrete, and the times are reflecting that. The racers love to come here, and we love to have them. Stay with us, because when the Menards Chevy Series returns, we'll show you a supercharged superstar from the fabulous 50s. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series. Eastern Pennsylvania is pure American farm country. And what better place could there be to find pure American performance and custom cars? Let's check out our next producer's pick. 1987 IROC Z here with Harold Karen, who owns it from Long Island, New York. This thing is spectacular. Thank you very much. I actually bought it on my 18th birthday. It was a stock. 305 Camaro that I actually turned into this over many, many years. I pretty much did a full back half on the car, full chrome molly cage. It's a 352 cubic inch motor with 871 blower, runs on E85, electronic fuel injected. So it makes about 1,100 horsepower to the crank and 900 to the rear wheels. What kind of music are you rocking when this thing is on the street? The exhaust. There is no radio in the car because I want to hear the exhaust. That's what I like and that's what I listen to. <laughs> and the blower belt. Time now to take a look at our Duracell Copper Top Award winner. The DriveDuracell.com Crank It With The Copper Top Award winner is this beautiful 1957 Chevrolet 210. And it is owned by Rob Rieger from Reading, Pennsylvania. Rob, amazing car. How long ago did you get it? I bought this car eight years ago. And it took me four years to get it to this point. Um, started with a bare frame. And four years later, this is what it looks like. The paint is called Colonial Cream. It's a 57 color, and it was produced for basically a half year in 57. It was not a popular color. And I chose this color because I wanted to build a 70s style hot rod that looked like an antique car that somebody's grandmother gave a kid, and he took it out and he hot rodded it. So I wanted the old look, the nostalgia antique look, and then I wanted the performance of the, of the supercharged small block. A lot of it stemmed from the Hollywood Nights movie back in the day with Tony Danza. He had a 57 similar to this with a no hood and a supercharger. And I thought when I got to the point in my life where I could afford to have that type of car, I would build my own with my, you know, my spin on it. But that's sort of the theme of, of what this car is. This engine here is a 383 small block. Uh, it's got a scat lightweight crankshaft. It has Crower I-beam rods. JE pistons, it's about eight and a quarter to one compression, uh, AFR race heads. Uh, the blower came from the blower shop and it was tuned. The carburetors were tuned and I bought from Big Al's Toy Box and he got the car running tip top perfect. People appreciate it, especially the older crowd. Uh, the older people, they appreciate the look with the Kragers, the, the, the car itself, it's not overkill. You know, bench seat, four speed, I mean, a lot of people remember that from back in the day. And uh, it's always positive. It makes me feel good. Bob, congratulations you on your much. award, beautiful car. Thank you very much, and I want to thank Duracell. Their battery's been wonderful for me. The car starts hot. Never any issues with the battery, and, and thanks again for this. I really appreciate it. The signs may say Chevy, but other GM cousins can play too, especially if they combine brands. This car is a 1969 GTO convertible. Uh, it's a real GTO car. I cloned it as a judge. It's been about a three year process. Um, I actually got it up here in Pennsylvania. It was pretty much rust free car. The paintwork went the quickest on the car because uh, the body was in good shape. The motor, uh, I got it out of the 010 Camaro. Um, so it came out with about four and a quarter horses. And then I uh, put a Night Fury cam in it and made a cold air intake and a few other tuning. And uh, had a company do the dyno on it and the tune on the car. And right now it's getting uh, 500 horsepower to the tire. Um, so it's pretty stout. I got a six feet Tremec transmission in it and uh, got 411 gears in the rear but you know at about 65 mile an hour in sixth gear I'm about 1800 RPM so the 
car is very drivable. A lot of people do Chevelles. And, you know, I, I, I'm a Chevrolet man, but I really like my convertibles, and I just wanted something unique and different. We are obviously surrounded by some beautiful cars, but every now and again, one just pops. It just stands out, and this is the car. Joe Troilo owns this 1940 Chevrolet. Joe, this thing is standing out in a crowd. Tell us about it. Thank you. Um, Joe, this car was found in the bottom of a barn underneath the uh, where the cow stayed. In fact, no one thought it was restorable, but I decided to give it a chance. It was a retirement project. When I first got it home, my wife said, hurry up and throw a cover over it before the neighbors see it. It was that bad. But uh, as you can see, it, uh, it came full circle from uh, uh, a car that was found in the rough and back to the way it is now. Yes, it has a, a complete 1984 Corvette suspension, but the front and rear was grafted to the 40 Chevy frame, which is a pretty strong, beefy frame, and it goes down the road pretty nicely. How about the engine? The power plant looks special as well. Yeah, it, late model 350, but it's done like the L79 Nova motor of the 70s. The neat thing about the powertrain, it has a Tremec 5-speed. That's a .64 to 1 overdrive, so I can run 75 mile an hour at about 2200 RPMs. It really draws a crowd no matter where I go, and, and my wife will say, all we got to do is park it, and before you know it, somebody will come around and want to know about it. Stay with us for more of the Menard Chevy series from Maple Grove when we turn our attention towards some tough trucks. Welcome back to Maple Grove Raceway. Whether it's in the parking lots or the surrounding showgrounds, this edition of the Menard Chevy Series has plenty to offer. And it's not just performance or classic cars. Trucks, they get the job done, they help us work, and you can even start your very first business. Like this man's father did, Richard Fox from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. What year did he first start his business with a truck just like this? 1951, he came out of CC camp and started a business excavating and this is the, this is not the actual truck but it's one exactly like he had and it's just a tribute to him i wanted to do it for years and i'm getting older now i figured do it now or maybe never so that's what i did and uh, i'm pretty proud of how it turned out four-wheel drive sitting way up high this next one is awesome dave riddell from Warrington, Pennsylvania. You have truly a unique vehicle. Yes, it's a work of art. I've owned it since 1992. Every piece of this truck was handmade. Um, the frame's been boxed and welded up over 150 holes in the frame rails just to make it a clean and smooth looking. Uh, the four wheel steering, I cut ends off of a front rear and welded them on the rear rear so I could, I could steer the back of it. I want something that you, you don't see every day. But from what I understand, your son has laid claim to it. Yes, um, I tried to buy him his own truck. He's 11 right now, and he insists on having this one. I think he's right. You might have to give it to him. Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Time now for this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. Z28s are always special, but this one is rare and special for more than one reason. This is our Rock Auto Restored Award, and this is Guy Amato from Falston, Maryland. Guy, why is this car special? Um, it's a four-wheel disc brake car. They only made like 200 and some from the factory back in 69. They wanted to use it for CCA racing, and they had to, they had to sell a certain amount of them. And really, I don't think they sold that many. I heard it was only like 100 and some, but uh, that's what makes it a rare car. The car was a show car. It was in Super Chevy Magazine and Guide to Muscle Cars back in the 80s. And the guy had it, and he had it sitting in the garage, and it had a cover on it, and the cover caught on fire. And it melted the paint on the side of the car and messed the parts up. And, it, it, and I just did a total, complete frame-off restoration of the car and brought it back to what it looks like now. How difficult is it finding parts and the parts that put you over the top to win awards like this? Oh, it's hard. It's hard to find a lot of stuff. And, and really, I got some stuff from Rock Auto here just to kind of finish the car up that I needed. I needed parts. I went to the Nationals, and I, I had, didn't have a few things, and I got them from Rock Auto. You know, I lost points because I didn't have some of the things. So that's how I ended up, uh, you know, buying the stuff from Rock Auto. I've only been to five shows, and I've won two best of shows already. 
and uh, got numerous awards. I scored 975 out of 1,000 points at the Camaro Nationals uh, in the bow tie class. What separates the cars that are way up there in the stratosphere and the ones that don't quite make the cut? Well, it's, it's attention to detail and the, and the finish of the parts and the right bolts and everything like that. This is definitely a concourse ref, uh, finished car. And, but with me, I could have scored higher, but there were some simple things that I didn't do. And one of the things, like, I needed some, some of the bulbs for the inside, and that's where I got them for Rock Auto here just to finish the car up because I lost points at the Nationals for not having the bulbs in there. I, I did a lot of stuff myself, and I have some friends, you know, to help me do things. And uh, my interior is all original. I didn't really have to do a whole lot to the interior, but I redid the aluminum on the manifolds and stuff. I replated the boosters. Uh, I phosphated the parts myself, and, and I did a lot of stuff like that myself. Guy, you have a beautiful car. You deserve the award. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. There's still more Menard Chevy Series to come, including a Camaro that gets hundreds of ponies thanks to twin turbos. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ERP, the world leader in fastener technology. Rock Auto, all the parts your car will ever need. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Drive Duracell, Frank with the Copper Top. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series from Maple Grove Raceway. Time now for something completely different. A Chevy-powered ride that is not par for the course. Actually, it started out as a 96 Easy Go golf cart. I modified it a little bit, uh, put a Chevrolet engine in it. It's got a 305 uh, HO with a uh, competition cam in it. A little small cam. Gives it a little bit of a rattle. It's got straight pipes on it, so it's kind of loud. Well, the paint is actually just a commercial purple metallic. The guy that has painted a couple of cars for me, his son does airbrush work, so I had him airbrush the True Fire and the Chevrolet emblem. But actually, the flames carry on up the side. And you can't be a hot rod golf cart without a flame job. I mean, that's, that's, that's a given. If a golfer wanted to buy it, he could hit his drive and probably get there before the ball did. The swap meet is always super cool. You never know what you're going to see and what you're going to find. From full cars to wheels to collectibles, it's all here. You just got to be ready to look. And you never know when you're going to find that one thing that you absolutely need to make your car exactly what you want. You need the cigarette lighter plug-in? They've got it. The brake pedal cover? Some sort of foam bushing for something that you know and I don't? They've got it. Are you kidding me? 1957 Chevrolet, chop top, wheel tubs, all steel, $6,000. I gotta go through my piggy bank. This is awesome. It's ready for a little bit of love. This thing could be on the street or on the track in a matter of months. Our final award is from Minty's, available at Menards, along with other fine true science products. We are luxuriating in this beautiful 1970 Chevrolet Camaro. Winner of the Minty's Top Dog Award. The owner is Jeff Fern from Pennsburg, Pennsylvania. And Jeff, on the inside, I feel like I'm in a Bentley. On the outside, this thing is awesome. Well, thank you, thank you. I've been working on it for a very long time, about the past 13 years I've been putting into it. This year in October, I own it 34 years, and when I took it to the interior shop, I said, look, put me an interior in this car that makes me feel like I'm either in a Bentley or a Mercedes or a Jag with a cage, and this is what I got. It's fantastic. I, I, I love the work that they did, and, and the car is just outrageous at this point. It seems everybody likes it, and I've gotten really lucky because I built it in my garage. In high school, it was green 
with a green interior, jacked up with air shocks in the back, a 307 that, that knew how to eat oil like it was going out of style, a four-speed that I got really good at braking, and uh, you know, it just went through all the changes, but it was lucky to, to survive. I put the car aside for a while, and I decided, well, I'm gonna do something different. And I decided, well, you know, why not make a twin turbo car instead of a blower car, and make something truly different and unique and honestly, it's really hard to build a Camaro these days, any, any type of car really, that is over the top and unique and nice at the same time. And I think that I might have hit the mark. Well, the body mods include the heavily, heavily uh, reworked rear quarters. Uh, the idea was to have sort of a pro mod look to it. And uh, so what we did was we cut along the body line, stood the quarter up, and refabricated it so the car could sit down over the chassis, kind of like you heated the car and then smashed it down over the chassis so it would give it that squished out look. Everybody seems to really like the color, the concepts, everything, how everything flows together. And I've always said that the colors between the, the tan on the inside and the blue was a lot like the ocean meets the beach. So I see it as a very calming and, and appealing look. 1958 Chevy Impala Coupe. I had a brand new one in 58 when I was 17 years old. I bought this one from a guy up in New York State. I had it two weeks and then tore it all apart. Every nut and bolt has been replaced on this car. The hardest part was trying to get the interior. Because the interior for these things, you just can't go to Pep Boys and buy it. <laughs> but it's right and it's correct and it's installed in there perfectly. A lot of people say that uh, we shouldn't have an interior. I said, yes, I should. Don Gartless did a job on this car. When he interviewed it up here a couple years ago, and he called the interior Gordy. <laughs> It's gotten the editor's choice here at uh, Maple Grove. I've gotten the General Motors Heritage Collection Award for the best Chevy in the country in 2008. Oh, I've had a lot of fun with this. Oh, I drive it everywhere. It's, that's why it's got wheels on it, so you can drive. It's, it's been my life's work, you know, trying to get this thing to where it is. And there you have it the best that Pennsylvania has to offer. Maple Grove was awesome, the drag racing, the car show, the swap meet, that Steel 57 still got me thinking about it. Next time, we're gonna go around the country and try to find some more. So join us on the Menard Chevy Series. Next stop, Denver, Colorado.